This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 916 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Horsemanship Radio Show. Host Debbie Laux is joined by farrier Ada Gates to talk about mannerly horses and hoof balance. And we'll get right to our tip after this nutritional minute from Kentucky Performance Products. Hi, Glenn the Geek here from the Horse Radio Network, and I'm here with Karen from Kentucky Performance Products. We're going to talk about omega fatty acids and equine nutrition. Called Contribute, that is a fish, it's a combination of fish oil and flax oil, and it provides a complete complement of omega-3s. Okay. It has an 8 to 1 ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, and it contains the plant and marine sources of omega-3s. Now, there's been in the past, there's been some palatability issues with fish oil. I don't know if you've ever smelled some of the fish oils that are... Mm-hmm. The, lots of horses will run to the back of their stall and just stand there going, oh, That's my right. God, Mom, what did you put in my feed? <laughs> some of the human pills are like that, too. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you can really take it. So we did a lot of research with our product, and we got a fish oil that um, uh, just on its own smelled pretty good, and then we've added some flavor, some cherry flavor to it that has made it very palatable. So we have very few horses turning it down. And like anything, you have to introduce it slowly and should introduce it slowly anyway to the horse. But we have very few horses that will turn it down. Well, that's uh, that, that's terrific. It's good to learn. I never knew about the ratio between the threes and the sixes. And, of course, you can find out more information on Kentucky Performance Products' new website. has a terrific, a terrific article on this, and we'll link to that in our show notes as well as on our Facebook page. And Or you could just go to kppusa.com to find out more about omega fatty acids and the Contribute product. Just look under Products. So how much is horsemanship needed for farrier work? Well, I think it's critical, and I think there's sort of an unhappy uh, area where the horseshoer arrives to do the work on the horse. He's not expected to train that horse. The horse is not well-behaved, and so even though the horseshoer knows how to handle a horse, that's not his job. His head is down there close to the feet, which are, as you know, the protective devices of the horse. And horses will kick and leap and jump and and jerk their feet a lot. And, it, and it, it's upsetting to the farrier. And it's it's hard for a farrier to stay calm and, and keep patience when he, he perceives that the horse is not well-behaved because he has not been well-trained or he's mm-hmm. not being well-handled at the head. And so I think that um, people perceive the farrier as ill-tempered. Mm. He's not. He's trying to get his job done. He's trying to do an excellent job on the horse, and he's not able to because there seems to be a breakdown of cooperation, can be, between the handler with the horse in the middle and the farrier trying to do his job. Mm-hmm. And so... Sometimes things go south. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do you keep your patience with a horse? Well, I, the first, I never take a horse out of the stall or touch a horse unless he's got the Monty Roberts Dooley halter on that horse. Uh-huh. I allow the horse to become familiar with the Dooley halter. I make sure that it's properly fitted absolutely before I take him out of the stall that it's snug and it's, and it's well applied. And then I, you know, back the horse, bring him forward, turn him to the left, turn him to the right. I show the owner how to do that. I uh, encourage the owner to do it themselves. And then I rely on the Dooley halter to help me get through the horse. If let's say he's got a problem foot, like he always kicks on the left hind or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, we just do the training session. And, it, you know, the horses are very smart. They get one or two uh, reprimands with the duly halter, you know, negative consequences. And they usually just calm right down. Mm-hmm. So well, again, I, I think what I, I'm hearing you saying, if I'm if I'm hearing it right, is yeah. that you're training on that horse a bit. Um, and and I I always hear Dad say that he doesn't think it's fair that the farrier shows up to train on the horse that the that the owner should have that horse prepared a bit. Um, what do you think on that? I couldn't agree more, but. Um I think you almost have to do it as a self-preservation device. Yeah, it is. I, I'm I'm going to turn to to horses' hoofs now, just a little bit, okay. um, because okay. before we go, I I would love for you to tell me a little bit about your philosophy of you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you started, and and you're assessing a hoof. You're terrific, Debbie. That's oh. absolutely right. I think that there is so much opinion and ideas and uh, all this stuff swirling around on the television and in the magazines and everywhere you go and look and what the veterinarian says you should do and this and that. Basically, you want the horse's hoof to have 50% of its mass in front of the center of its foot and 50% behind, just like a seesaw. Mm-hmm. And it's a fulcrum, and it's the point of articulation, and it has never changed for thousands and thousands of years. And so it's very easy to find the center of the hoof. It's the widest part of the hoof. Mm-hmm. But you can use a ruler, and you can measure that. It's also three-quarters of an inch back from the active tip of the frog. And there's lots of rulers out on the market. Um, we have one uh, together, Monty and I, on his website. It's the patent hoof ruler. But it's it's not any different from any other item. It's just a little bit more customer-friendly for working on the foot. And basically, you want to start at the center and trim the foot in the toe, and you get a number, or let's say it's two and a half inches, and then you have that ruler on the hoof, and you see where two and a half inches is, behind center, and that's mm-hmm. where you cut the heel. You want to take all your flares off. You want a nice, even hoof wall all the way around, and you let the horse tell you that it's right. And so what they'll do is they'll walk up to you. You'll watch them walk towards you, and their head be a little bit high, and maybe the stride's not quite as, a little bit short, and there's just a kind of, not a lot of tension in the body, but you'll see it just be a little bit of restriction Mm -hmm. and you trim that foot and you put it down on the ground and you watch that horse the head will drop the ears will go forward the eye will soften and sometimes they'll exhale exhale a lot air out of their belly Mm -hmm. and then you trim the other foot exactly 50 50 you also want to see that you're 50 percent to the inside and 50 percent to the outside That will follow. You want to do the front back. That's the most important to start. And then then walk that horse away. Turn him around and walk him back towards you. And he'll walk like a dream. Mm. He'll be soft. He'll be relaxed. The foot will stride out. The shoulder will soften and become more loose. He tells you every time. Every time. Well, there you go. So you can listen to Horsemanship Radio every week at horsemanshipradio.com. For more tips on everything from do-it-yourself fly spray to teaching your horse to get to the base of a jump, go to horsetipdaily.com and look for the topics drop-down menu on the left. And now you can have all of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go with the free Horse Radio Network app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. This podcast has been brought to you through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products. Find them online at kppusa.com. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. 